Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris, and today we are joined by... Keelan. And we're going to be watching some Nasir Adderley tape with you guys. So he is a fourth-year senior from Delaware. Uh, he plays safety, a little bit of a change from our wide receiver below binge we went on uh, yesterday, now officially, barely, uh, at least Eastern time. Uh, he is listed at 5'11 and 78 at the Senior Bowl, 195 pounds, 8 and 7 eighths inch hands, and 30 and 3 quarter inch arms. So, uh, first question, as I ask everyone uh, when we first go over this, is do you have any concerns or question marks about his measurables? Um, I don't think so. They look pretty average, I guess. Yeah, and one thing that I was talking about on Twitter the other day is a lot of people are probably going to see the 5'11 and 78 and think he's small. But, I mean, honestly, look at all the other safeties. Savage 5'11, 5'11, 5'10, 5'11, 5'10, 5'10. And, like, even the Earl Thomases of the world, 5'10. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many safeties in the league nowadays that are 5'10, 5'11. I don't really think the height's going to matter a lot, so... Um, anyway, uh, do you have any other questions or whatever before we get into the tape? Mm, no, and even looking at that, he's extremely close to six feet, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, true. <laughs> okay, uh, so, you ready to just start? Yep. Perfect. Uh, hopefully you can see everything. I should have everything good to go. Uh, do you have a preference for speed? It's probably best if we start in regular speed, to be honest. Sure. Sounds good. There we go. Okay. If you need something rewinded, let me know. Alright. And if he ever gets lost for some reason, number 23. Top. Looks like it might be a cover one. Cover three. Because the corner is way off. Run play. I like how quickly he diagnoses this. Mm hmm. Boom. Just breaks. Oh, replay. Okay, left side of the field here. Cover three, looks like. Let's play by the corner. Down here, bottom left corner. Nice wrap in nice. the here. I really like his technique on this tackle. Yeah, that was a nice tackle, yeah. And actually, I'll slow this down too. So that we can kind of get a better look at this. Right here. Nice lunge, covers the nice ground with the, the lunging motion as well. Mm -hmm. Right here. Okay, again. Free safety side. And again, just a very simple... Well, that wasn't him, but... I really like the, the technique in the Delaware defense. Boom! Just look at the break. 
Oh. Excellent. Again, free safety side. Looks like cover one this time. Yep. Also, something I'm going to point out here, did you notice that, that he was on that receiver? Yeah. Like, he started out in cover one in center field. Mm hmm And look where he ends up, all the way at the boundary. Even though that throw was very clearly out of bounds. Okay, back left. And just, this is one of my favorite parts about his game, is I just love his motor and his ability to play from snap to whistle on every mm -hmm. single play. I mean, that ball goes off his hands, and he's still running. Yeah, it, it's, I've just noticed that he's, like, gone after the ball every play, regardless if it's out of his reach and stuff, so it's really nice to see. I like his efficiency here. And this is going to be, now that we know that this is going to be a run right, we're kind of just going to watch how he adjusts to this. And he kind of takes away mm -hmm. the cutbacks. Stone safety side. Here. He has a defensive signal caller for the secondary. Boom, nice quickness. I really like his initial burst. I don't know if they're going to show replay that. I don't think they are. Nope, not. Okay. Um, I really like his initial burst here. Almost as if he's shooting the gap, but then he backs off. Just watch the first step and then the top speed. Yeah. Right this time. Thank you, business level. No. Okay. Top right this time. Oof. Rip the snap. <laughs> Left hash. Nice pressure. Mm -hmm. The one thing I don't like about watching safety tape is because of their generally deep coverage a lot, you don't really get to see them in like the full play. Yeah. On tape all the time. Yeah. But, I mean... Like, we saw that he was outside the left hash to start the play, and he's right there. Mm -hmm. He always finds a way to get on camera. Which is a good thing. At least in football. Mm -hmm. And honestly, for the parts that he's not on camera, it's probably a good thing that he's not being targeted. Mm-hmm. He just finds the way to the football every play. Yep. Excellent motor. And there he is again.
kind of. Playing a little bit closer to the line. At least at the snap. But part of the reason why he's able to do that is because of his incredible athleticism. Mm -hmm. And his acceleration and ability you get from 0 to 60 is really, really nice. Like I broke that out. And yeah, he gets me on that. Now where did he start that play? Left hash. What about the thirty five? Look at where he is by the time the receiver literally catches the ball. <laughs> I swear it's Earl Thomas. Yeah. Earl Thomas does the same exact thing in Seattle. It's like, oh, the receiver caught the ball. Look where he really is. And you get to see a little bit more of the zone here. And he kind of just doubles. That was kind of an awkward jump in the, the <laughs> camera, but I think you saw kind of. Yeah. Well, look how aggressive he broke. First step. Top notch. Screen. But like the one thing that really intrigues me about this is like we're in the third quarter. We're about halfway through the third quarter. And honestly, has he even been beaten? Well, not to say, well, okay. How about this? Has he even been challenged <laughs> more than like twice? Yeah, I don't think so. I, we just saw the one deep ball mm -hmm. in double coverage. But like, they're not even throwing near him. He just happens to be around the football at the end of the play sometimes. Most of the time. I find that to be almost as big of a testament to his abilities as as much as actually. Nice physical tackle. Yeah. And I love the finish. So first off, we're going to see here. Watch him read this combo. And he breaks on this really, really nicely and quick. But what I like here is he's not over aggressive with a lunge. And he doesn't force himself out of this play. Right here, he just cautiously makes the conservative tackle and brings him down. Very nice. Indeed. This whole defense has been really good, though. I will say that. I was watching... Uh, someone else, not too long ago. And, uh... Yeah, this defense is very impressive. I mean, <laughs> just completely bull rush the dude. I fully expect their defensive coordinator, or whoever's in charge of their defense, maybe it's that coach, to, uh, Get some sort of bump promotion to the yeah. end at some point. You see, has this whole defense playing really technically sound. Tackling, pass rushing, coverage. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Seems like every play the quarterback is moving. Looks like we're going to replay this. So I like how uh, Nasir is actually able to get up for this. Got a hand on and knocked it down. Yep. And almost just as importantly, knocked it out of play. Mm-hmm. Because even if we tried to knock this pass down, well, I might be a little bit late to back up, but even if we tried to knock this pass down, there's still a chance that one of the receivers already on the ground could try and, like, come over and catch that. But he makes a smart play to just take the ball out of the field to play. Yeah. Nice gap shooting. Great coverage from that guy. I mean, it seems like every play is a really good defensive play. This should be a good view for Adderley. Got a nice break on the ball, and he's able to get in on the tackle. But what I'm going to really start out with here, and actually I'm going to point this in slow-mo for a second, is he starts shifting over at this point. But this ball, that's in the receiver's hands, and he's already in his stride, coming down to it. And by this point, he's not even at the line of scrimmage, and he's already in full stride. This year is so fast, like, an athletic, it's crazy. I will say, someone else that did bring this up to me, too, is that this is against D2 talent. Or yeah. at least Lafayette. Um, so he might look fast relative to the talent that he's going against. Um, but the one thing that really stands out to me to kind of counter that is that he's not all athleticism. And that's what I was kind of trying to go for on the last play is that what's more impressive to me is how quick he is to diagnosing his mental processing. Now, obviously, again, there's the place to be differential between, say, D2 and Division One, and even, of course, the NFL. Uh, but he does just, like, a really nice job of being aware of where the ball is at all points. And that's probably his biggest asset. It's just his awareness and spatial recognition and vision. And processing and motor. Yeah. He's not just an athlete, is he? Yeah, exactly. He saw that ball going left the whole way. He can, oh, well, he somehow ended up flying across the screen. Shocker. But, but watch here. You can see him. In fact, I'll slow this down, too. Watch how he kind of leans over. Right. Here he kind of shifts a little bit. And right there, you can kind of see him start to... Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then here, he's already in motion. This ball barely leaves the quarterback's hand. And he's already sensing something to the left side of the play. And quarterback's first read, left side of the play. I bet he knew exactly what they play, what they were running. And then... <laughs> ah, hilarious. Just flies it. And that was in, like, that was in half motion. Like, I mean, just look how fast he flies across the play. Boom. Wow. Down the field. Boom. 
and he, he made the play too. Oh my god. If this weren't the first time that I'd seen that, I probably would have been a little bit more hype. Not gonna lie. <laughs> but I've seen that play a million times already. So, but yeah, it's. I mean. And of course, we have to get the replay. But first off, the ability, the ball tracking. We'll start with that aspect. Mm. His ability to find where the ball was going and adjust his body uh, and and move to that position and find where. Uh, how do I want to put this? Position himself is probably the best phrase mm -hmm. uh, to get himself there to make the play. Yeah. Secondly. Of course, you have to talk about the athleticism and not only the vertical leap, but the speed and the acceleration to get there in the first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the hands and the actual catch and the ability to finish the play. Yeah. Is really impressive. And of course, maintain control through the process. So, that's the first game of. Nasir Adderley. Yeah. Thoughts so far? Really talented, really athletic, and good ball skills. Oh, yeah. And we saw that mostly with the last play. Uh, I yeah, think... but you... Oh, you go. Okay, sorry. Um, But even, like, the ability to, like, track the ball shows me he has good ball skills, even if he had that last interception. Even if he didn't have that... The ability to track the ball down and be near the ball after every play just proves to me that he's a really talented player. And the one thing that really stood out to me, I've already said this like probably five times, but I'm just going to keep emphasizing this, is his motor and ability to play every snap. He mm -hmm. doesn't take it down and off. I mean, that last play that we saw was the pick. I mean, he, he's, he's kind of one of those four-quarter guys who doesn't really slow down toward the end of games, which mm -hmm. I think kind of speaks in part to his conditioning, uh, but even more so his motor, because we saw him fly around the field all game, so it's not like he's just kind of sitting back and conserving his energy either. And like, oh yeah, I'm not going to try as hard so I, I can have more energy in the fourth. Like, he was still going full speed every play, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and he still had something to give in the fourth quarter. It's almost like he has chip iron shoulder syndrome. So, next up, we'll take the Elon game. Sure. And one thing that I will say is, of course, because he's playing for Delaware, it's not exactly the best competition mm -hmm. or anything. Uh, but I will also say that Joe Flacco is from Delaware, and he ended up winning the Super Bowl MVP. So, competition doesn't always necessarily... Exactly, yeah. Oh, I missed him on this play. Yeah, me too. Okay, here we go. Left hash. Boom, right there. Okay, right side of the screen. Uh, a little bit off the screen, kind of the right side here, but we'll see him here, see some that down. Right side of the screen. I love, okay, so, were you going to say anything about that, or no? No, I... Okay, so what I'm going to point out here is I'm actually going to slow this down for a second. Alright. And watch the path that he takes to the football. First off, obviously, he's already in, heading downhill at this point, which is nice. Uh, play rack. But watch here. He kind of positions himself without being too aggressive. And then he kind of just slips through the block and ends up making a nice tackle. 
Mm-hmm. And I think they show another view of this. They do. And we'll get to see a little bit more from behind the block here. The watch right there. And just a nice tackle. Slows him down enough for everyone else to, to gain tackle. Mm -hmm. Boom. Range. Okay, here we go. Single high. Now, okay, so one thing that I'm going to say before we see the result of this play is watch his his head, right? So he reads that this quarterback is looking to the left side of the field, starts moving over to the left, right? Yep. Now he, again, checks. Quarterback still staring down his read, shifts even more to the left, and then just breaks. And that's how he's able to get there so quickly. In fact, he actually makes the tackle before the, the corner can. And it's all just visual awareness and spatial recognition and being aware of what the quarterback is doing. Mm -hmm. Super talented. Right here. Okay, deep shot for a change. Oh, I was way down there. Okay. Oh, very cool. Right here, moving across. And play. Right hash, looking at the other two sides, actually with the right hash. And again, just look at his his mental processing, his ability to recognize this play. Watches the quarterback's eyes, sees this quarterback is looking to the right side of the field, and he's gone. The ball's not even out of his hands yet, and he's already broken. Mm -hmm. And then just so quick with his first step and his acceleration. And you see, yeah, you see the perfect view of it there. I mean, that's... You start shifting a little bit to the right here for the read. But he mm -hmm. does a really nice job of recognizing the keep. Quarterback size. And he's gone. To right. And I mean, props to the defensive line in the front seven mm -hmm. for all the quick stops, but it's, I mean. He's still getting there. So there was one of the negative plays I saw. It's honestly doesn't happen too often. But I think that, honestly, part of this is because of the defender in front of him here. So what ends up happening is obviously they end up scoring the touchdown as the end result. But what we're going to see here is I want to pay attention to this gap. Now, number nine ends up taking this blocker on, right? 
-hmm. but he kind of fills the gap. So what happens is, I don't know who between Five and Nasir is supposed to take the inside, but my guess is he's number five, with him being the lineman, you would, you, I would kind of think, and taking yeah. out the blocker. Mm -hmm. But what ends up happening is he takes outside leverage on this play, and so does Nasir, thinking that Nasir has to maintain the edge. So the running back just slips through with this player completely out of the play, taking that outside, and Adderley isn't able to recover back inside, which leads to the touchdown. So pick who you want to blame on that play. Uh, personally, I don't pay it too much. It looked to me just like a miscommunication on assignments. Yeah. And there's another one. Again, we did see some nice tackling form in the first game. Um, but there are occasional missed tackles, and we will see that here. Now, I will say this, props for him to getting himself in the position to make this play. He recognizes this run really nicely, but right there, the running back just completely slips out of it. Mm -hmm. And we'll see even better luck here. Just right hand stiff, swats him away. So, missed tackles are a thing. Uh, nothing that isn't too correctable with yeah. NFL coaching. That was quick. Goodness. I like how Nazir read that one perfectly for that last play. Oh, yeah, going toward the boundary. Yeah. Like, even before he snapped it. Yep, same thing. I think part of that was because the tight end, too. Mm hmm. It was almost kind of shadowing the tight end. Damn, that's it. This is one of my favorite plays, actually, by him. I actually like this play more than the interception. And what we're going to see from him here is, again, his just ability to read this run and adjust his pursuit angles and change direction. So he's going to really show off his athletic ability. And watch this here. So if the quarterback decides to keep this, he's already heading down toward the left hash. Well, I mean toward, well, the mid hash. But he realizes here that this is going to the right side. And look at at that. He's already read that and is already breaking back toward the outside left. All right, so he gets in this gap and then he still makes the tackle. So he literally went on this play from Beyond the, or outside, I should say, of the right hash at the five yard line to the right hash at about the seven. And then at the, about the eight, nine yard line, he redirects this and he's able to make a tackle at about the 11, way outside in between the numbers and the hash. And that just, to me, just shows off how quickly he changes this direction and how quickly he can read the play. And it's really, really nice skills uh, on his part. These aren't teachable skills. I mean, one thing that will change is the play speed. He's definitely going to have to adjust mm -hmm. to the, the difference in D2 talent to the NFL. And NFL quarterbacks are going to read plays a lot quicker than a D2 quarterback will. 
So it is something that players will have to develop over over time, and that comes with experience. But he plays like he's been, been playing the safety spot, and and reads plays like he's a se- like he's a fifth year senior who's been playing the spot for three years when he's. Playing D2. Again, just the break. I don't know if you saw how quick he was with this first step. Boom. Oh, so quick with the break. And that's why I like I, I kind of see the hype with him playing corner because he has the cover skills and he's probably a little small. Yeah. But honestly, I think he has the mental traits that I want in a safety. Same. And his field vision, his ability to read and diagnose. I mean, whereas if you're if you're playing him at corner, it's kind of just like go and cover a little bit more and you're kind of limiting what he can do in terms of reading plays. So he has the physical tools that you want in your corner. The back pedal is there. I haven't talked a lot about that in this video yet or the making of this, uh, but he has a really smooth back pedal as well and you might see that mm -hmm. once or twice. The athleticism is definitely there to play corner. The ball skills, as you mentioned after the first uh, game, definitely there to play corner. Mm -hmm. He's a good tackler for a corner, whereas maybe not so much as a safety yet. He actually gets in on the tackle too. And, yeah, he's sitting on the tackle. Crazy. Boom. And that's the other thing that happened to him, too. I don't know if this is necessarily a missed tackle. Um, but he occasionally does go for hits a bit too often. Mm -hmm. In this case, I would like to see him wrap. Instead of just trying to knock him over, because the running back bounced off of that. And especially an NFL running back, who's got the balance of, say, Saquon Barkley. Mm -hmm. and you're not going to knock him over like that. So I want to see him be a little bit more... Uh, conservative consistently with this tackling and again it's not like he can't do it we saw some really nice wrap tackles in the first game with some really nice form it's just that he has that mentality of going for the big hit and you see again I mean Perfect wrapping roll technique here. Now that guy grabs the face mask, which might have helped. But watch me see Adderley on this, 23, if 
you forgot. Bam, just wraps them up really nicely and rolls. That's, he could do that at Alabama. Yeah. It just flies. I'm not sure this dude started the play at. Outside the right numbers, or I'm mean, outside the right hash, at about the 13 or 14 yard line. About climax of the throw, he's about mid or actually probably about left hash, five yard line. Oh wait, no, that was him in the end zone. Ha ha. ha. Oh my lord. Boom. He's already in the end zone and breaking. And he gets to the corner. So he covered about 20 yards of ground straight back, plus, like, whatever the distance between the hash and the corner of the end zone is. Mm -hmm. Horizontal. And again, we see the change in direction here. Not directly, uh, but indirectly. Because mm -hmm. we see him start to move over and shade left here, but the run would be to his right. And he went at the end there, he made a nice little cut back inside. Defensive signal caller, secondary. And again, we kind of see a little bit of back pedal on this play. So watch for his footwork. Just so clean, efficient, and smooth. And honestly, Play that in slow motion so you guys can get a better grip on that aspect. Right here, step, 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 step. No wasted motion. Not mid here. Now, right hash. Now back to mid. And he was the guy that contested that, if I remember right. Yeah, he was. So, I mean, again. Just look at where he starts his play. About the right hash. Now, to be fair, he did shade side. Mm -hmm. But look at where he is when the camera gets on him. Already at the number. First off, the range and his, his his ability to get there. But also, we saw this in the first game with the interception. His ability to high point and still be physical at the stem and at the catch point. I mean, that's a really nice job of challenging the receiver and forcing him to make a really tough contested catch. He does come down with it. Uh, so he's not completely able to get the breakup, but regardless, still. Able to get in there and enforce there's And of course, there's also the ability or the, uh, the play there to limit the rack too. Because the receiver had to go up and win the 50-50, he wasn't able to get any yards after the catch. It's closing there from, Adder from Adderley. And boom. He was the guy that contested that too. Just right there on the receiver.
yeah, not challenging him. And there was the one play where he came across the field to make the play. Well, tried to throw in his direction, but they didn't. All right, this is probably the first time where he challenged Steve on his side. And even then, the throw was, because he had help from the corner, of course, the throw was pretty terrible. Nice bull rush from the defense as well. Back right corner play. Boom. Makes nice. Well, it wasn't exactly. And see, this is the thing. As I mentioned earlier, he's not exactly going to make a form tackle or anything. He just goes for the hit to knock him out, which is effective in this particular case because he's by the out of bounds marker mm -hmm. or the boundary. Uh, but you kind of would like to see at some point maybe some form, which we have. Nice pass rush again for the up team to time. Nice pass rush, again. Again. For the up team time. Nice hit, too. So, uh, has any of your thoughts changed after that game? Um, not really. I'd like to see some better tackling, which he proved, so I know he can do it. I just, I just, like, I said I hope to see it improved cool. because I I know he can definitely make it better than what we saw this game. The Elon team, yeah, for sure. Uh, anything else as far as you can positive or negative so far based on both games? Um, apart from what I said after the Lafayette game, not really. He just further proved what I thought. Ready for the third? Yep. Sweet. So this was the semifinal, if I remember correctly. Uh, North Dakota State, of course, Easton Stick. So they'll get to see uh, versus a little bit more of a, I guess, potential pro prospect. Mm -hmm. Might be a kind way to put it. Without being too, <laughs> uh, too harsh. Poor shine week from Stick. I'm actually not a... I'm not a hater of Stick. I kind of liked Stick when I watched his tape. The actual tape was pretty decent. Uh, he's, yeah. He's just... The senior bowl... Or the shrine game, I mean, was... Oh, bueno. I guess so. So here he is here. Again, just brings him down. Really nice conservative tackle. Mm -hmm. Again, you see a little bit of the back pedal here. Just really, really smooth, limited wasting motion. And then the break out of it. And a nice hit to knock him out. Very nice. I really like how he adjusts his pursuit angle on this play. And again, obviously the range and everything is a factor because you see he starts out almost between the hash and the numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, what's most impressive about this is how, again, he just he's really efficient with his angle and trying to take away lanes. Like right here, he's kind of in this gap. Yeah. But hey, he does a really nice job with the closing speed, is the term I'll put on this. And I'll, you'll hear me say that again later in this tape. Uh, but he does a really nice job of closing the gap between himself and the, the ball carrier. Mm 
I'm making the tackle. Well, not making, but ganging on uh, the tackle. Defensive signal calling for the secondary. And getting linebackers with each other. So this is another interesting play because obviously again we see the back pedal uh, if you still have questions maybe about that nice mm -hmm. long strides too but he's way off here in the deep zone so someone in the linebackers my guess is four uh, got beat behind so at this point it's Adderley's job to not get beat on this play and to try and cut off the ball carrier, I'll call him a receiver, uh, the, the receiver's angle to the end zone. Boom. Just makes a nice conservative tackle. Last guy there, can't get beat, brings him down. I'm not going to say too much about that. I actually, you know what? I actually want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, I like how he just kind of, he's like mirroring, mirroring the ball carrier. If he gets by the front seven, he's going to be there to make the tackle. So I really like that. Thoughts on the hit? Hmm, well, sorry, what was that? You see it? Oh yeah, yeah. So he pushes the blocker down. I don't. I guess it was from reflex or whatever. I'm just nice to get through there, and he's available to make the play if the running back gets through. Okay, so question for you: Do you think that that's a good play or a bad play to knock the blocker out like that? Um, I think it's a good play. Because, I mean, he's just making his way to the ball in the blocker. I mean, the blocker is trying to do the same thing to him, so he's just making himself available for the play, and I think he did a good job with that. Interesting. Okay. So you aren't worried that that's undisciplined mm. or unnecessary or anything of that sort? I don't think so, no. Cool, okay. I agree. I actually really like the physicality he plays with. And it kind of shows to me, and this might be a little bit of a stretch, but it kind of shows to me, combined with some of the other plays that we've seen, uh, how much passion he almost plays with. Mm -hmm. And it kind of shows that he plays so physical with his body that he's almost af not afraid of anything. Yeah, I know. And, like, the hits that he makes and the, how violently he plays with at, with his, his tackling. And then to see a play like that, I mean, the dude is just so, so physical. Yeah. And it's, oh, I love that about safeties. And, I mean, like I said, there's an argument to be had for, oh, it's an injury risk. And uh, it's not a safe play. And like I said, the whole undisciplined thing that could be unnecessary. I don't know. I love it. <laughs> That's what football is. Yeah. I really like how he does a nice job here of shifting his alignment really effect efficiently. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the offense controls the snap, so they're going to be able to 
basically dictate when the play starts. So you never know as a defender when exactly it's going to get snapped unless your name is Clue and Feral. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of a joke, kind of not. But for real though, uh, he does a really nice job of putting himself in position there before the offense is able to get the snap off, despite the changing formation. Again, just no nice shot coming down. And again, just the, the simplest stuff here, right? But it's all about the finer details and the techniques. The nice, subtle change in direction. And I'll actually slow this one down. Right here, starts to come down. Then just the very, very slightest movement here, but he gets outside. And then right here, he pauses, bam, centered, able to knock him down. Well, get him down. Obviously, again, the form tackling thing is a question in that particular case. We would like to see him wrap and roll a little bit more. Yeah. Again, nice blowing up the blocker and gets taken out by his own dude. And that's the second time. We've seen a missed gap. Mm -hmm. We saw one, depending on who you blame it on, uh, in the other the game we just watched, the Elon game. Mm -hmm. Right here, he kind of loses the ball, it looks like. Uh, he's going after the QB. And, I mean, to be fair, five other guys probably missed it. Running back having it, at least. Or the quarterback keeping it. Man, just so quick to react. This reaction time. Boom. Off and running. That's it. But still, for the most part, they're not really challenging him. They're not going after him or anything. He's still playing from snap to whistle. The motor's still there. Oh. Now, another thing I, I wanted to point out, too, is I like how he kind of disguises this coverage. So watch here, oops, it's actually like a really brief time I have to pause this. So watch right here, he starts this play out. Oh, there's still five seconds left in the play clock. He could easily be shaking this way already and heading back toward his zone because it's a, it's a deeper zone. But he's still there and then as soon as the ball is snapped, he doesn't allow Stick to read that pre-snap. And he's just off. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting because it forces the quarterback to have to make an additional read on the play in the safety. Mm -hmm. Again, just a nice physicality at the end of the play here. Just boom. Right there with the offensive lineman. 
And what's funny, what I find hilarious about this play is the, I mean, next thing up is lineman. He's probably close to about a half foot taller, I'd say. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, 6'5 ish would be about a half foot taller. Yeah. And what is he? Probably 275, maybe a little bit more than that. So you're talking give or take 100 pounds. Yeah. Like, that, he's getting scrapped. Nasir Adderley is basically pushing a guy here after the play that's about 100 pounds heavier and about a half foot taller than him. Yeah. Like, this dude is not afraid of anybody or anything. And again, that play, just the physicality and the finish. And another perfect example of just playing snap to whistle. Just starts out with a spin move, right? I'm actually going to slow this down. He's going to start out by trying to shed this block with a spin. And get outside of him, right? But it doesn't work. So, bam! Just drives right through him. And almost defensively pancakes him. Also, this running back extremely talented. I think his name's Bruce Anderson. He was in the Senior Bowl. And he was... Huh. Okay, yeah. I, I can't really remember last year's Senior Bowl, to be honest. I'm kind of down to this year's class. I can't even remember half the guys in this year's Senior Bowl, unfortunately. And... It's just the range. Mm -hmm. I mean... Like, yeah, he's running against the other guys, so, oh, he looks fast because he's catching up to a North Dakota State receiver. Uh, at the same time, that's still, a football field is still 100 yards from end zone to end zone. Not from, like, total, like, back of the end zone, but I'm talking, like, from goal line to goal line, 100 yards. Football field sizes don't change. Mm -hmm. It's his ability to cover the ground. You're not comparing him to the speed of the receiver and the speed of the corner. Mm -hmm. You're comparing him to how fast he can cover turf. That doesn't change no. going to the NFL. He could be playing for a D10 school. He could be playing in high school. He could be playing at Alabama. He could be playing for the Lions, for the Raiders, your team, for the Broncos. Any team, that football field is still 100 yards. He still covers the same amount of ground. Okay, yeah. That's my yeah. personal... Yeah, and I completely agree with you. And to get, like, okay, I mean, obviously the offensive lineman is kind of not really trying his best to drive on this play. But, like, just here at Hyrule, he's a 100 and, what did I say at the beginning of the video? 80 pound? I don't remember. Safety. And he's just moving this offensive lineman through the end of the play. Nice physical tackle. I mean, every play that he actually makes, makes, and again, just nice job of getting in there and being gritty and physical. Like, it seems like every single time he's actually involved with the, like, the making of the play, mm -hmm. the one word, physical. Yeah. Physical, the, the catch point. Physical tackle. Physical hit. Or athlete, athlete, athletic. Now we're into the second quarter. Still making those tackles. Still running for the football. Still making those plays. It's been, at this point, if you think about halftime as a, a separation of the two halves, mm -hmm. and... The, the timing there. 
we're getting toward the end of the first half. He's still making these plays. It's been yeah, 30 sure. minutes of action in a row. Does he look tired to you? <laughs> um, I mean, they're down five scores, so. Oh, well, that's actually a good point, too. What Does he look tired to you? Um, not really. He keeps playing the same way he would if it was a one-score game. Yep. And, like, that play. Boom. He's going for that thing. Mm -hmm. That's a sick catch from the receiver to actually come down with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thirty seconds at the end of the half, and he's still like right there on the receivers. This tackling took me there. play the half. Oh, he slipped. Oh, dear. Oh, I didn't count his touchdown. Looks to me like he kind of slipped or lost his balance or something. Might have been trying to overextend on your cut. Not sure. It's coming down. Yeah, he takes a little bit too much of a sharp angle. Yeah. And he slips. Oh well. One play. Boom. Again, just <laughs> the grittiness and the physicality. He know he was trying to knock him over. Mm -hmm. Like he did the other guy. Bam. He's trying to get him on the ground. And with offensive linemen, we talk about mean streak a lot. And how guys, like, we love guys who play with that mean streak, that nasty, that, mm. that constant grit and physicality. And yeah. he brings that to a safety position. I mean, the dude plays like he's 500 pounds and 6 foot 10. But yeah, at the same time, he has the athleticism of someone who's five foot five and one hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible combination of both the strength and physicality, and you see it there. Yeah. It's a perfect combination of strength and and physicality and grittiness and aggressiveness. But yet, at the same time, of athleticism and speed and acceleration and, and shiftiness. Boom. Boom. And Clean the dude head. is winded. What that? And the dude is winded. Oh, yeah. What I like about this, too, is it's really nice clean hit. Boom. He kind of leans a little bit with the head, but he definitely makes shoulder contact. This dude reminds me of the mixture of Earl Thomas, like what you said, and... He has flashes of Cam Chancellor as yep. well. I went a little bit bolder with mine and went Sean Taylor because of that constant motor and like even yeah. there's always we always see that highlight of like Sean Taylor playing like back when it wasn't cool to play in the Pro Bowl, like basically killing guys in the Pro Bowl game. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like Mr. Adderley kind of brings that same dimension. I see it. Yeah, I do. And just like like you mentioned, like even down five scores, like he constantly just knocking guys over. Mm -hmm. I wasn't old enough to watch 
Sean Taylor live, but like from what like the highlights I see I've seen, yeah, he definitely reminds me of Sean Taylor after you pointed that out. Boom, nice physical tackle. I mean, that wasn't exactly a form tackle, but... Man, I don't know. It's just like he plays my style of football. Like, I've always been... I talked about this a lot during the receiver tape uh, I did today. But, like, I've always been one of those defensive-type guys who always appreciated that side of the ball a little bit more. Yeah. And he just plays, like, that style of game that's, like, mm. really fun to watch. Oh, yeah. I did want to point that out, too. And we saw a good example of this um, earlier, except he actually made the tackle on the first play, whereas mm-hmm. this play he wasn't actually able to, to complete the tackle process. But what I really like about this play is how he avoids these blockers. Slips underneath that guy, slips through that tight gap, and, of course, that guy gets in his way. But he just does a really nice job of avoiding blockers without having... Now, obviously, as we've seen several times, he can't take on blockers. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not like, oh, yeah, Devin Bush can't take on a blocker. But um, he has a really nice job of avoiding guys and trying to find gaps and adjust his angles to make plays. Again, just the ability to adjust his angles. Nice physical through the play. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, right there, we see him take on the block. Boom! Just shoulder charges the tight end and makes the tackle. Which I believe might have been for, oh, one yard game. Okay, cool. And here's the perfect example for those of you guys who may want to see him at corner of this back pedal. Watch this here. Step, 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 step. So clean. So quick. We'll you'll see it in full motion. Mm-hmm. And so efficient with wasted movement. Bam. And you notice how I break out of it too and change direction. the end result of the play. But what do you think about this play? Did, uh, based on what you saw the first time. Um, I kind of lost him, so if I could watch it again, that would oh, be... Oh, yeah. Now this is going to be in slow-mo, I think. Oh, that's in regular. Um, he got stuck on a block the first like at the beginning of the clip and then he just I mean the receiver would have eventually pulled away so he made a diving grab I wish he would have went for his legs maybe 
just to, I think it, he would have been able to trip him up. So maybe a too high of a tackle. Fair enough. So what do you think about the second phase? You talked about the first phase with the block and then the third phase with Miss Tackle. Anything about his pursuit stand out to you? Um, he's been able. To, he's able to like keep up with him like long strides. I th- he's really good in pursuit. I just wish his tackle was a bit lower. Yep. Very nice. That's actually going to be a fumble six. But what's interesting is toward the end he starts to slow down. It's like two minutes to go. Mm-hmm. Unrelated, but these helmets remind me of Michigan's helmets. Yeah, yep. I was talking to Brain about that the other day. So, there you go. There's your three games of Nasir Adderley. Uh, we'll start. Do you remember what you said after the first game? Yeah, I do. I said that I really like his ball skills. And I... I continued, I stand by that, and I would have liked to see him, like, for the people who want him to be corner, we didn't really see him in man coverage, Mm -hmm. so, I mean, we don't really have a sample size to tell where, whether or not he'd be, he's really that level of a corner that he would be at safety, but I expect we see some sort of Samples at the combine and senior bowl. Oh, is he at senior? Yeah, he is at senior. For some reason, I thought he was at the senior bowl. He was, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I so just... I should see some of that tomorrow. Well, today, mm-hmm. now, but. Yeah, I'm not gonna be home, so I'm gonna record that for sure. Oh, dang, that sucks. Yeah, I had to record the practices, I still didn't get around to watching them. I was sick this week, so I watched one practice, and one of them was at the um, was it indoors, and there was no media because of the thunderstorms, and I didn't watch the third one. Me either. I watched a little bit of it, but I didn't watch most of it. And I'm gonna be at a professional lacrosse game tomorrow, so. Oh, nice. Have fun with that. Thank you. So, uh, anyway, uh, so you talked about what you saw after the first game. How has your opinion shifted, either positive or negative, if it has, uh, after watching all three from the first? Um, my opinion really hasn't shifted. I think he's really talented, really physical and athletic. Like you said, he's a perfect mixture. And I think his first, the first game he watched, I think, was his best game. But the last two what we saw was still like showed what I thought I saw in the first game and he's extremely talented and yeah I I think my opinion hasn't really changed cool uh so any other thoughts that we haven't talked about just not really a question but um I don't think so Sweet. Okay. Uh, so one final point is I know the Lions went with him. So I know Denver had interest in him to some degree. I know Elway talked about him a little bit. If Oakland showed interest in Adderley, would you be happy with that? Um, at the bottom of the first with one year two playoff picks? Oh, at the bottom of the first for sure. I thought you were going to say fourth overall, and I'm like... I don't think any safety will ever go top five again, unless it's literally like Sean Taylor, I read, or... I I doubt it might next year. I think you will. So would you be happy with that? 
Yeah, well, I would think, yeah, I, would. I think it's 24 or 27 that you guys have. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I'd be stoked. Interesting. He kind of gives me... I don't know if you're old enough to remember him. Uh, and this probably isn't like a really good cop, in honesty. Because uh, he ended up busting. But he reminds me a little bit of Taylor Mays. Mm. Do you remember him? Um, can't say I do. I mean, I've heard the name. I haven't really watched it. Yeah, yeah he, I'm pretty sure he was at Oakland at some point. Uh, he was the USC safety during the USC Texas Rose Bowl thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the Wings Young comeback, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that dude could fly and that dude could hit. But he went back for his senior year and they're yeah. costing him draft stock. I think he actually helped Nat- Adderley mm-hmm. going back for his senior year because he was able to, unfortunately, we didn't get to see any of his 17 tape, which might be a good thing. Uh, yeah. Depending on how he played in 2017. Uh, but, yeah. It's, uh, it's really interesting. I'm seeing a lot of the same things as him, too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, with that being said, uh, that does it for you, you said, right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys for tuning into this one. This is really fun. Unfortunately, I did have to re-record this. I don't know if you saw it from some of the videos I liked. Uh, I, I had already watched some of these. I tried to disguise it as best as I could uh, sometimes. Um... Uh, but yeah, he was someone, especially the first time I watched him, it was like, oh my gosh, he really caught my eye. Big time. Uh, and going on a little bit of a, a tangent uh, here, but in Detroit this year, we've talked a lot about adding playmakers, is what Bob Quinn calls it. And I honestly think he's kind of the perfect playmaker because he can make plays on the ball, he can make plays with his hips, he can make plays with his legs and his hands and his feet, and everything about him to me screams playmaker and what you want in a guy at the safety position uh, to go out there and make a play. Uh, clutch time, end of the game, conditioning factor, um, his ability to motor to just keep going and going and going throughout the play. Mm-hmm. It kind of reminds me of exactly what Matt and Bob are looking for in a Detroit Lions player. So if he falls to us in the second, and honestly, if we we're able to trade back or up for him at the end of the first, definitely someone I would not mind as a Lions target myself. So with yeah. that said, uh, thank you guys for tuning into this one. Hope you guys liked it and, liked it and enjoyed uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. Thank you to Keelan for being able to join us in this one. Thanks uh, for having me. Hopefully you had a little bit of fun with your first mm-hmm. exposure to him. Yeah, it was a lot of fun watching him. But uh, for now, don't forget to check out some of the other videos we did yesterday. We did Receiver Blitz. And uh, we'll be having a lot more for you guys coming up over the next couple of days, weeks, and months. But for now, peace out.